Good morning and welcome to worship from Bainbridge First United Methodist Church. We're so glad that you have chosen to worship with us and your family uh, today. Uh, we do have a couple of announcements. First, we invite you to find the words for the hymns on the church website before we begin. Uh, those are there for you. Uh, please sing if you can. If you can't, we invite you to read the words to more fully participate in our worship experience. We're also beginning to gather together on Zoom. We have several opportunities for you. We have Bible study on Wednesday night. We're studying Adam Hamilton's Unafraid. And then also Miss Ida is working with our children um, on Wednesdays and Fridays at 1 o'clock. Wednesdays is for our younger group and Fridays is for our older elementary kids. Uh, please contact us for instructions about how to do that. And if you need help, don't hesitate uh, to call me. Now I invite you to settle in and prepare yourselves to worship God. I invite you to sing with us to God be the glory.
let us go to God in prayer. God, we offer to you now the concerns of our hearts for those we love who are in special need of your presence and your grace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Gracious and holy God, we come before you in prayer in this time of worship, and we are grateful for moments of stillness in your presence. We are grateful for the families that gather with us, the neighbors who check on us, the church family that we call to mind now. Help us to feel your presence with us. Help us to feel your presence on days that feel long. We pray especially this morning for our health care workers, our city workers, our leaders who care for us, keep us going, and make difficult decisions. O oh God, grant to us your peace. Remind us once more to not be afraid, to trust you in all things. Give us grateful hearts for the acts of kindness that are happening in our community. And we give thanks for the creativity that is emerging in all sorts of ways. We give thanks for the dedication of teachers who are reaching out to their students in new ways. And we give thanks for those who have stepped up to ensure that no one feels forgotten or alone. Be with us now, O Lord. Remind us once again that you are our refuge and strength and ever-present help in trouble. Give us the courage to try new things in new ways. Show us new ways to be your people. O oh Lord, we don't quit being the church. We are the church in every place that we find ourselves. Help us to always be a witness to your love and grace. We pray all these things in the name of Christ who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. It's now time for our children's sermon with Miss Ida, and I don't even know where she's gotten to today. Miss Ida? Hi, kids. It's good to see you all this morning, even though I can't see you. It has been good to see you all on Zoom this week. And if you missed last week, make sure you tune in this Wednesday at 1 or Friday at 1, and we'll continue our stories. Now, today, <clears throat> I have a cup here. And I have some water. Grayson, have you ever filled a cup over and poured in too much water or soda or anything? Maybe. Yep. Maybe, yes. We all have. And we all know that it goes all over the place, right? Sort of. Yes. So I'm going to fill this cup up all the way to the tippy, tippy top without it overflowing. Now, do you think you can put something in there? Put a, put a paper clip in there, just one at a time, and let's see what happens. It's, it's going to overflow. You think? 
No. Do another one. No. Eventually it will. Yeah. Let's see, how many is that? Is that four? I don't know. Five? I added two. Oh, five, six. Seven. Eight. eight. Nine. Nine. Ten. Eleven. Twelve. Thirteen. Fourteen. 16, 16, 17, 19, 23. Now let's do them one at a time just to make sure how many we get in there before it starts overflowing. Okay. But it keeps going, doesn't it? That's 20? I'm not sure. <laughs> we can count after. <laughs> We'll count after. A lot of times we feel like we are full to the top with God's love because we are so overwhelmed by his love. But you know what? The more we stay in God's love and the more that we accept his love and the more that we share his love with other, others, the more it can fill us up. It takes a lot of God's love to make us overflow. God's love can cover a multitude of hurts, a lot of anger. Now, <clears throat> lately, I know you guys have been trapped inside and you've been trapped inside with the same people day in and day out, night and day, and we're kind of getting sick of each other. And it's real easy at this time to lash out and be angry. It's, it's built. And be angry with each other. But this is a time when we need to practice God's love and kindness for those around us so that we can be filled all the way up to the top. He put in that whole box of paper clips and it didn't but overflow he, until he, he moved it. So Absolutely. remember this week, as you go through this week, to be kind to those around you and to show them God's love because they're kind of sick of you too. Let's say a prayer. Heavenly Father, through this time, help us to remember your love and to share your love and to show your patience and your kindness with those that we live with. Be with us and protect us through this time and bring a swift end to our separation. Amen.
Our scripture this morning comes from the book of Ezekiel, the 37th chapter, the first 14 verses. The hand of the Lord came upon me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me down in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me all around them. There were very many lying in the valley, and they were very dry. He said to me, Mortal, can these bones live? I answered, O oh Lord God, you know. Then he said to me, Prophesy to these bones and say to them, O oh, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, I will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live. I will lay sinews on you and will cause flesh to come upon you and cover you with skin and put breath in you and you shall live and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I had been commanded and as I prophesied suddenly there was a noise, a rattling and bone came together, bone to its bone. I looked and there were sinews on them and flesh had come upon them and, sin, and skin had covered them but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, prophesy to the breath, prophesy mortal and say to the breath, thus says the Lord God, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain that they may live. I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived and stood on their feet a vast multitude." Then he said to me, Mortal, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They say our bones are dried up and our hope is lost. We are cut off completely. Therefore prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people, and I will bring you back to the land of Israel. And you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people. I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live, and I will place you on your own soil. Then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken and will act, says the Lord. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. So here we are once again on our unbelievable Lenten journey. Now, we started this series talking about the dual meaning of the word unbelievable. Unbelievable in the sense of something that is not to be believed. And unbelievable in the sense of amazing. Yet I believe now there is a third kind of unbelievable. We are using the word unbelievable today to describe our current situation. And I think what we mean by unbelievable today is that our brain is having a hard time catching up with the reality that we are experiencing around us. We are experiencing things that we never imagined would be true. Before now, we could not imagine a situation where things like graduations are canceled where church is, is closed, where we are urged not to visit loved ones. We were amazed when the children had three whole weeks out at Christmas and it felt like forever having to figure out what to do with them and we never imagined six weeks or more of unplanned time out of school. And even as we are living in this new arrangement, we do not want to believe the true impacts of what is happening. Now, we've been using Old Testament stories to lead us into unbelievable faith. And as we encounter Ezekiel today, I think he likely moved between these three understandings of unbelievable I'm pretty sure he experienced some of that lag between what his brain could process and what was happening around him. And we join Ezekiel in the valley of the dry bones. Bones. Now, bones are essential. 
but it's not usually good when you can see them. We know they're there, but you don't want to see them. Sometimes the sight of bones can make us uncomfortable, but the Lord picks up Ezekiel and puts him down in the middle of a valley full of bones. God leads Ezekiel to walk around the bones. You can imagine him weaving in and out, over and around. Ezekiel got a good, up-close look. And the valley is full. It doesn't say there was a pit of bones, but the valley was full. There are many, many, many bones, and they are very, very, very dry. Very dry bones are white. They are bleached by the sun. They are almost dust. Bones that are very dry are indicators of absolute death. There is no sign of marrow or tissue, no sign of life. Something must be dead a long time to become dry bones. And my favorite TV show is called Bones. It's a crime drama about a forensic anthropologist nicknamed Bones. And she is called in when a medical examiner can't help because all that's left is bones. And now I know this show is fiction, but what I find so neat about it is that Dr. Brennan is sometimes able to tell where the person lived, what kind of work they did, the position they like to sleep or sit the most, what diseases and struggles they had, what major injuries or accidents they might have experienced in their life. And it's amazing to me how much our life, our day-to-day life, changes us all the way down to the bones. However, for Ezekiel and those of us who aren't genius PhDs, bones hold no sign of the life that once was. Ezekiel is the prophet for the people of Israel who are in exile. They have been forced away from everything that's important to them. They feel cut off. They have been separated from their leaders and their children and their parents, their friends, their home, their land, their animals, their temple, everything. Maybe some of you feel cut off in these days. And the people of Israel have lost hope. They think they are dead. They feel as lost and dead as bones that are very dry. There is no future, no hope in exile. Now we too sometimes find ourselves in a valley full of very dry bones. Well, I don't think that's quite where we are here. And now there are places in the world and in our country that are confronting a valley full of death today. Some people look around and all they see is death. But my friends, valleys of dry bones can come in many forms, periods of grief or illness, times of depression or conflict and struggle in relationships, work situations, economic hardships. Some people are afraid that they are headed into the valley of the dry bones. The valley can be made up of or caused by many things, but the one thing you know is there are very many bones and they are very dry. There is no life in the valley of the dry bones. And God says, Ezekiel, can these bones live? And Ezekiel says, oh Lord, you know. Maybe Ezekiel's response is a sign of the prophet's confidence in God, but to me, it's a bit of a dodge because he doesn't want to tell God no. No, God, these bones are dry. They cannot live. Standing in the middle of the valley that is so filled with death, the possibility of life is simply unbelievable. I think Ezekiel is sure that there is no life to be had in this valley of the dry bones, this valley of death. Now, when Grayson was small, 
he'd often ask if things are alive. He'd say, Mommy, is your phone alive? Is Daddy's iPad alive? Of course, he meant, can I play with it? Because he said this because we often said, no, you can't have it, Mommy's phone is dead. And, of course, the opposite of dead is alive. So he wanted things to be alive. We all want things to be alive. And God commands Ezekiel to prophesy to the bones. And there is a great noise in the valley as bones rattle and bones connect to bones and then muscles and sinews and flesh come upon the bones. But the bones are not alive. They are somewhere between alive and dead. They are zombies. Zombies are neither truly alive or dead. And sometimes in our effort to make it through the valleys of the dry bones in our lives, we end up becoming the living dead, but we are not really alive. We go through the motions of life, the motions of life that are are hard for us to figure out now, motions like getting up for work and showing up for church. We get dressed in the morning, we get supper in the evening, we look alive, but we know that within us, there is still death. Sometimes this is a good first start when you've been in the valley of the dry bones. We're certainly better than we were when we were a pile of bones, but being undead, that's our word for this week, being undead is better than being dead, but it is not life. After the valley of dry bones has been transformed to the valley of the undead, God commands Ezekiel to prophesy to the breath. Ezekiel calls out to the breath to come from the four winds and to breathe upon the undead. And after Ezekiel's prophecy, the scripture says that the breath came into them and they lived and they stood on their feet and they were alive. I think it's interesting to read this scripture in light of the fact that the scary part of severe COVID-19 Cases is the loss of breath. Here in Ezekiel, the breath is the same breath that God breathed into Adam at creation. The breath is the same breath as the Hebrew word ruah. I tell children that this is the oldest word for God. If you say it right, it sounds like breath, ruah. Breath is the spirit of the living God. Life is only possible, true life is only possible when the spirit of God dwells within us. The difference between being truly alive and walking around half dead is the presence and the power and the activity of the spirit of God in your life. The prophet Ezekiel shows us in an unbelievable way that God is a God who creates life in the midst of death. As we watch news reports of the struggle between life and death, as we consider how our actions, small and large, may mean life and death for others, my friends, know that whatever your valley of the dry bones is, the good news for today is that the bones can't be too dry. You can't be too dead. It's not too late for God to breathe life. God has the power to breathe life, true life, into situations where there is no sign of life to be found. We do not have to live as the undead, because God's Spirit is alive in us, which is surely the amazing part of unbelievable. Amen and amen. I invite you to join us as we sing, Love Divine, All Love's Excelling.
And now, dear friends, we miss you so much. May the peace of Christ be with you and your household today and always. Amen.